Hey guys, in this video I'll be covering the thermal mod for the Cube i7 book. Overheating is a main issue for this tablet PC and I mentioned it in my Cube i7 book review. If you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and check that out. But before we get into it here, I just want to show the normal temperatures that I was getting before I did the thermal mod. Here we see the idle temperatures ranging in the low 40s. It's already hit a maximum of around 64. I'm going to go ahead and launch Minecraft, which is a CPU intensive game, and you already see it hit the mid 50s all the way up to the 90s. I'm going to go ahead and go into the game here, and you'll see the temperature shoot up to the maximum 99. Everything's going to turn red, and thermal throttling is going to take place. The game itself does run smoothly however, ranging from around 30 to 60 frames per second with the occasional dip to 20. But overall everything runs nice and smooth with no apparent lag. However the thermal temperatures are out of control so we're going to have to go ahead and take care of that. For the thermal mod you're going to need a few parts. The first thing is thermal grease and here I have Arctic MX4. Now honestly you don't need to use a highly rated thermal grease like this since you're not overclocking your desktop PC or anything so any kind of thermal grease should be okay. Next you'll need one copper shim. The one I bought came in a pack. The size of the copper shim will need to be 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters and one millimeter thick. You also need a thermal pad roughly 145 millimeters by 145 millimeters and this also needs to be one millimeter thick. To open up the Cube i7 book, you'll need to start at the top. Find a little gap in between the front screen and the back case. And you'll need to use a plastic prying tool. I have one left over from working on phones. But you can use any kind of hard plastic like a credit card and just slowly work your way around the top and then around the edges, gently twisting to pop off the back case. And once you disengage all the plastic clips, you can lay your tablet down and pull the back cover off to reveal the insides. The back of the case does have a thin copper shield and all the excess heat should be transferring to this plate. Now make sure you're grounded and you're going to have to take the power cable off. It's a bit tough but use the sides to pull it towards you and pull back on the little plate here and it should eventually come off. Now remove the four screws that are holding the stock heatsink in place and there should be a thermal pad here but when I pull it off as you see there is no thermal pad in between the core M and the heatsink. So this obviously caused the extremely high temperatures on my model and shows a lack of quality control. So moving on I'm going to go ahead and apply some thermal grease on top of the core M processor. Then I'm going to put the copper shim on top, followed by the stock heat sink. And on top of that, I'll be cutting some pieces of thermal pad and placing it on top. Now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward applying the thermal grease here. I did end up putting a little more than I wanted to, but just make sure you have a nice even spread and place your copper shim on top. Line up the holes on the stock heat sink and screw it down. Next up I'm going to go ahead and cut some pieces of this thermal pad and place it on top of the heat sink like so. I did leave a little gap for the screw holes just in case, but this layout does cover most of the heat sink and should transfer a lot of heat. Now make sure to reconnect the power cable and we're going to go ahead and put the rear case back on. One thing to keep your eye on is the main power and volume switch which is easy to come loose. Start from the bottom and just slide the case back on and squeeze the sides until everything snaps back into place. Here you can see that I had trouble with the switch that I just talked about so just keep an eye on that when you're putting it back on. And once you got everything snapped back into place go ahead and long press the power button and just be aware that the initial boot up after disconnecting the battery does take longer than normal so there's nothing to worry about if it takes a little longer than normal. So for the results you'll see that the idle temperatures are hovering around 40 degrees. 
launching the Minecraft launcher. It reaches around 40, stabilizes, which is an improvement over the 55 degrees before the thermal mod. So we'll go ahead and go into the actual game where we previously got up to 100 degrees. And here you'll see that the max temperatures are ranging around 50 degrees. So overall, the thermal mod caused the temperatures to drop by half, averaging around 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. Taking a look at some of the other videos, there should have been a thermal pad in between the Core M and the stock heatsink, but unfortunately mine didn't have it. So this will probably cause a variance in temperature of around 10 degrees, but still overall the temperature drop is massive and should definitely be done if you decide to buy a Cube i7 book. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe by clicking my icon for more videos on random tech, gadgets, and hobbies.